Janae. Hey, hey, HBCU Pulse family. What's up, everybody? So how are you doing today? I'm actually doing pretty well today, even though, you know, I did like kind of today's episode coming a little bit better, but today's honestly, oh, kinda. <laughs> today's honestly been a great day, though, so I honestly cannot complain. Amazing, amazing. So, huh, um, Janae and I, uh, we watched Grownish on tonight. Um, it, it, it is a lot to say. Uh, it's a lot to say, um, but I'm going to start with this. I think this is a great way to start it. So we talked about uh, the ratings on last week. We did a whole ratings breakdown of everything, and it's not looking good. Not looking good. On Thursday the 21st, which was uh, the first episode in, over, in almost over a year, we had, had 434,000 viewers. This week he had 342,000. This past week, 342,000. They dropped 100,000 plus viewers. What does that tell you, Janae? I mean, I, this, is, this, is, this is the numbers. Yeah, according to the numbers and based on just other calculations from other um, shows that have these same ratings, the shows usually get canceled on their fourth season and Grownish is already on season three. So <laughs> this could be a foreshadow that Grownish may be get canceled by this time next year because of their low ratings and they're losing their audience. And if you look at the percentage of the change in the demo, the demo change is negative 26.32. The percent change in between episode 10 and episode 11 is negative 21%. Yeah, that, that like, what, what saves Gronish is that they have star power. They have Yara Shahidi. They have Chloe and Halle. They have the five minutes they put in of Ryan Destiny in the show. They have all those different things that they have. <laughs> Let's be honest. They have all the different things that they have that gives them that rating share and that brings people back. But the reason why people are not watching is because it's not good. I, I, I just, we have to be honest tonight. I, we're not, we're not getting a grown sponsorship. They're they, they going to hate me after this. I'm, I, if y'all watch sports TV, I'm, I'm going to be the Skip Bayless of grown tonight. I, 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 like they did a great episode, the best episode that they've ever done of grown on last week. But this week, this week, oh my God! This week, I felt disrespected. I felt hoodwink, bamboozled, led astray, run amok. <laughs> I felt all of that. <laughs> I felt, I felt all of that. So let's just start with the recap, Janae. I need to get my thoughts together. I need to calm, calm my blood pressure down. Tell us what happened on this today's episode called "All Right." All right now. So that's actually funny. I just said "All right now," and the episode title is named "All Right." So, and if you don't know, fun fact. Grownish usually names their episodes after songs. So first season, they named a lot of their episodes after songs. So All Right was based on the Kendrick Lamar song. So, okay, cool. So All Right pretty much talks about in the last week's episode where we saw that Aaron was arrested by campus police because he was putting up signs because that he recently found out that Cal U funds private prisons, and we all know that prisons are mostly filled with black and brown bodies, and they're basically profiting off of the incarceration of African American and brown people, right? So, of course, that's messed up. Didn't like it. Aaron went and put signs up to try to combat this injustice, and he was unfortunately arrested. So, his girlfriend Rochelle recorded the whole incident and went viral, and he had the opportunity to go to Angela Rye. They actually had Angela Rye feature on the episode, Angela Rye's show, to talk about the injustice that he experienced while he's on the show he starts off really well talking about the injustices and then he kind of just spirals and talks about everything that's wrong with african-american issues and the disenfranchisement that we face in like a 15 minute segment so he honestly was wasn't that polished he was all over the place and it was not a good look furthermore we go later on to the episode and uh, he hits up Zoe because he wants to. He wants her to pretty much help him get like an image for the cause, the movement that he's trying to do, right? So she comes up with these jumpsuits and this hashtag, get these bands together um, for 
the protest. Also in the episode, um, Javi, Aaron, Aaron are getting pretty cool and talking a little bit more. And Anna has yet to say that her and Aaron had sex to Javi. So she's trying to figure out how to pretty much tell him, like, hey, by the way, this dude you cool with, we smashed. So we still going to be together. So he's pretty much trying to figure that part out. And also, Jillian covers a topic about creatives becoming activists. Because most people, um, when they get to a field, they're just trying to do it to get their money and because they love it. They're not trying to really be activists or try to have a platform or anything of that nature. And she talks about that with Sky and Jazz and later, we'll get into that later on in the um, recap. So that was also a really good point that was brought up. And then um, pretty much Aaron's girlfriend, Rochelle, checks Zoe because this was actually the part that we actually liked the most. So they were in the club. Um, uh, Aaron sees Zoe and was like, hey, thank you for helping me out. I appreciate you. And then uh, Rochelle walks up to Zoe and like, listen, y'all can still be friends. I know y'all got history, but let me and him have our relationship without your interference. And she just said, okay. And that was that. So that was pretty much the episode of All Right. In a nutshell, they had a sit-in after Aaron's fiasco on air. Zoe helped them get some jumpsuits. Jillian brought up some five points. And now <laughs> Javier knows that Anna and um, Aaron smashed, but they're still together. So that's the re little recap of the Grownish episode. All right. Zoe helped me get some jumpsuits. <laughs> <laughs> man, at, at, man, like at this point, Zoe, like Zoe, is a private shopper at this point. Like, like, like you know how, how like you or you order some clothes off, off Amazon, and they, <laughs> like Zoe's the delivery person at this point. What the world? Insta anyway, Zoe is the Instacart for fashion. You know, at this point, at at, at this point, um, so I, I want to preference my comments by saying that I love this. I, I love writing. I love storytelling. Mm -hmm. I, I am an author. I went to school for mass communications, although I, I did concentrate in radio, as you probably can tell. But I went to school for mass communications. When Gronish came on, I was super excited. I was super duper excited um, about Gronish coming on um, because I love Yara Shahidi. I'm a huge fan of, whole, of Zoe and, and Zoe. No, I'm about to say Zoe. Hallie and Chloe, I'm the big fan of them. Um, my guy Trevor, he was like, when Gronis came out, he was in Burning Sands. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, hey, that's my guy. Like, he did great in that movie. So I can't wait to see him in another college show. And then when I saw the backdoor pilot on Blackish, I didn't think it was going to be perfect, but I thought at the very least it was going to be good. Um, Gronish has been up and down for years. It's, it's been around for nearly four years. It's been around for four years. It started in January 2017. I was expecting so much more as we evolve through college for Zoe, for her friends, but it's remained stagnant. And we're going to take it act by act like we normally do, but I just have to say it, I hated this episode. I can't, I'm not going to hide it until the end. I hated this episode with a passion. And I feel like it personally disrespected black women. It disrespected all of our intelligence. And it's just in general, I feel as if they be copying and pasting storylines in places they feel like it fits. And it just was not good. So let me start off with this. So we talked about how great the episode was because you saw a lot of character development from Anna. And you saw that Zoe was not in the episode. And in that first scene, Zoe wasn't in the episode. We saw a lot of Aaron getting arrested. We saw a montage about protest and college students in protest. We didn't see any HBCUs, although we were on the front lines of every protest because college students, but that's perfectly fine. This is not an HBCU show. But it's like, you know, it was great. It gave us blackish. It gave us that style that Janae said, the style that Kenya Barris does. It gave us that blackish type of feel. All of a sudden, Zoe moseys on in like she did this episode. To, like, and Sky and Jazz are in there just getting ready to go support Aaron. All of a sudden, where are you guys going? We're going to support Aaron. What about me? What about me? What about me? Zoe is a cancer to this show. She is a horribly developed character. She is selfish for no reason. And she has been in existence since 2014. I'm not good at math, but I think that's eight years. <laughs> she's she telling me she's not grown in eight years right she's still the same selfish person she's got her heart broken one of her friends are pregnant 
Like one of her, her and her friends literally got with got with Aaron. Luca broke up with her. She's been checked countless times, and she's still the same person. Literally, like, like you, like you can literally go, like, finish school in eight years if you're smart. Like, she is still the exact same person, the exact same person that she has been since Blackish, and she's a cancer to the show. It was way better when she when she was not on the episode because it gave the other characters more time to breathe. And it, if you watched the episode, did you peek what Sky and Jazz said? Sky and Jazz got in there. Don Jess is like, this is not about you. And those were the best lines to me. And we thought as if Sky stole the show. Because Sky says literally everything we want to say to Zoe. It's not about you. This ain't your party. This ain't your sheet cake. This is Aaron's moment. Aaron got arrested. Yeah, you got feelings for him. But, man, it's police brutality. It's Black Lives Matter. So you worried about, about your, your barely your ex-boyfriend because he barely was with you. Right. So you worried about you worried about your barely your ex-boyfriend being at this thing. He got arrested. You worry about you. Where's the arc in that? Where's the story in that? Wh- why are we seeing this? Why? Why? I, 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 just, I just don't understand. Like, why is Zoe so obnoxious? Why is she so irritating? And why are they doing it to such a great actor in Yara Shahidi where we saw on Blackish doing the police brutality episode? We saw her be on her phone the whole entire episode. Then Junior, after Anthony Anderson's speech, wants to go out and protest, and she has a breakdown because she sees her brother being a black man and him going out there. She sees the danger. Where is it tonight? She was like what fifteen in that season in season two. She's what twenty now. She's a she felt she's a, a college dropout and she's regressed. Come on, this is insulting. This is literally insulting to all of our intelligence. This was the day I literally almost turned it off. Now I'm not gonna turn off on Janae. I wasn't gonna turn off because Janae, Janae was also watching. She was enjoying it, but I literally was like, bro, what's on TV? The Super Bowl is this Sunday. I, like, you know, I, I wonder if Tom Brady's going to win. I started thinking about other stuff outside of this mess. I honestly did. Look, I got more to say, but Janae, Janae go, go ahead, Janae. What do you think? What you think? Okay, y'all. So I don't have as hard of feelings. <laughs> My feelings are not that hard for the episode. Now, don't get me wrong. I definitely feel like it was somewhat of disservice to... Um, movements, civil rights movements, college movements, and etc. Just because in the episode they did a sit in with jumpsuits that said student on the back, and like that was then they got invited to a board meeting. And like, I'm just like, where is like, not where's the violence, but where's the violence? Like, where is the like, <laughs> where, where's the Negro spirituals? Where's the Negro spirituals? We shall overcome. Like, come on. <laughs> Like where where's the holding hands? Where's the marching? Like it's it wasn't given what I feel like it was supposed to be gave in regards to the marching. And we've had it and like I just don't understand it. Cause that wouldn't have happened. Like in real life, I remember Howard did a protest. They sat in, I think, one of their administrative offices and yeah. like nothing happened. I think they all got like kicked out. And even they show in a different world episode where they did a sit in and they like Dwayne got suspended. And it's like, where is the real consequence? Because you mean to tell me we're going to sit down on the lawn and we're going to get invited to a board meeting. Because all you know is going to happen. They're going to have the board meeting. They're not going to agree again. And it's going to be just more issues. So if you're going to really do an episode like that, one, well, it probably should have been longer, but comedy shows are 30 minutes anyway. So that's just the, the timeline for comedy. But, like, we're going to really talk about um, so- marginalized Americans. You should, like, really do it, you know? So, you know at a PWI what would happen um, if they were out there on the line. You know that they basically going to get the pepper spray and get a Bible and go take a picture. You know what's going to happen at a PWI. You, you already know they, 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 they at a PWI, that would be their Donald Trump fantasy. You already know that. Like, come on now. Like, they out there on the line. But we ain't going to get to the line part yet. It, it, it was good parts of the episode. It was, it was good parts. Uh, Aaron is always a scene stealer. Yeah. Because I said in our first after party, that Luca delivers his comedic lines horribly. Like Luca has the comedic chops of a wall. Like he honestly does. Like I laugh at this wall more. Like I honestly do. Like oh this is oh this wall this wall is, is an interesting color. Like I, I I laugh at that wall more than I laugh at Luca whatever his name is in in real life. 
he's a good actor for what he is. When they give him comedic lines, it just don't connect. It doesn't at all. And my thing is that Sky is great at delivering comedic lines within her character or of Hallie. And then you have Aaron. He's amazing at it. They did the throwback of, you know, the part when it was Anna and Javier and Aaron with, with the Republican you know, march they want to do. And then Aaron delivered the line about Tiki Torches. I laughed. And yeah. that was from episodes ago because he delivered that line so well. And Sky and Jazz, they always tend to be great in these parts because this is goes back to the writing. So I can speak to the writing where you have live wire characters. They're always the best characters to write. Those live wires, the ones that just say anything, because you can really speak through that character what you want the audience to get. Um, I have characters like that. I know in my first book, The Diary of Leah Anderson, like you had Jakaya. Jakaya was that around the way girl that she fight and she ride for Aaliyah and she said what she want to say. In my upcoming book, I have, you know, a character that says she want to say, that's a queen. You know what I'm saying? So like Sky and Jazz are that character that they say what they want to say. However, I did like what happened between um, I'm, I'm going to be honest, Ryan Destiny. Because I, I told you she was Jillian last week. Her name is Ryan Destiny this week. She literally, like, like, like that was like, that was a, like, literally, Ryan Destiny gave a Sesame Street appearance. You know how celebrities come on Sesame Street? Yeah. And, and then they'll be like, hey, kids, read more books. Like, that literally was what Ryan Destiny was today. Hey, Sky and Jazz, you guys should stand up as athletes and speak your voice, speak your mind. But, but tell us about that scene, because you love that scene today. So tell us about that scene. So this is actually my favorite scene out of the entire the entire show, and like you're gonna know why. So in Act Two, uh, Jillian's in the previous episode, she said she was gonna create a documentary so she could capture the life of um, so she can capture the lives of Sky and Jazz on the way to the Olympic trials. Hold on, we got Jamila Mustafa in the live. Okay, Hold Shout on. You, Jamila. <laughs> Hey girl, how you doing? She just hey stopped girl. the show. Jamila just stopped the show. What's up, Jamila? Oh, I saw Jamila. Hey girl. Hi. Girl. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Back to topic. So um she talks about um so she so they were having a conversation pretty much, and Jillian is telling Jazz and Sky that you should use your platform to talk about um the injustice that's going on. Hey Morgan, the injustice the injustice that's going on on campus with Aaron. So they're having a candid conversation, right? So they're so they're like yeah, they're so wrong for that. These people doing X, Y, Z. They need to stand up and fight and go against the system. Jill puts that camera up and she was like, well, I think the administration is trying their best to combat uh, police brutality because it is such an injustice for African-American communities. And I just know the university is going to do its part to combat this. Like just did a whole 360 on what they were just talking about. So then Jill puts the camera down and was like, yeah, can we get a little more authentic, like your opinion? opinions on the issue and they didn't do that so Jill asked them well why didn't you say what you told me on on the camera and they're like we athletes for the school we're not trying to lose our scholarship over this and we came here to run track we didn't come here to pretty much be activists we're, we're here to run and then Jill says now I uh, remember this Jill said um do you want to just run fast or do you want to run fast and make a difference and it brings up a conversation that a lot of creatives and a lot of athletes and a lot of people who are celebrities have because most people, when they get to their craft, they should get to their craft, do what they want to do with it, and see it take off. They're not here to really have a platform or stand for something. And most people don't want to stand for anything. They just want to be. So, but, you know, other people are like, you have this position, you got this platform to make influence. If you can make change, then why not do it? And I just thought that was like a really good conversation because a lot of creators even feel like I should have to take a stand on everything. If you guys watch the show Atlanta, there was this episode where Paperboy was said something about um gay people, something just really offensive. And he's like, I don't have a problem with gay people, but I should have to support it because I don't care about it. And it's like you should be able to not care about something. You don't always have to stand for something. So I think it's a very interesting conversation because we even see these current issues with our current celebrities. So what Janae did was Janae wrote a better episode than Grownish within what she just said. Because <laughs> that, when I when I tell you that was a two minute conversation and it didn't connect at all. Because first, like, because we had no context for real behind why they did it. I feel like we filled in the blanks based on what Sky and Jazz said. 
because they've been power to the people speak their mind the whole entire series. Yeah. All of a sudden, their flight attendants, hey, the peanuts are right here and the pretzels are right here. Buckle up and hold on tight. Like, wh where did that come from? Like, they've always been the live wires the entire series, but now she has a camera in their face and now they switch it up? Yeah. Like, they've always been that. They stood against when you had um, the, the basketball player. I can't think of her name. What was her name? The basketball player? I forgot her name, too, but I can tell you the story. I know what you're talking about, though. Forgettable character. That's why we don't know it. But, like, essentially, <laughs> being honest, but, like, you know, they stood against that. They had different things to say to Zoe, and they were real with her. Like, they dumbed them down, and they made them fake. For what? For why? To give, to give Ryan Destiny something to do when she does absolutely nothing on that show? And you brought her in just for the clout, just to say she's on there? Yeah. Can, 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 we, can, can we talk about that? Can we, can we talk about how you bring Ryan Destiny on? And we love to see her because for the longest time, you had black women that watched the show that said, why is it always light characters on there? Why isn't it representing all shades of black women? And they bring Ryan Destiny on. At this point, let's call it what it is. She's a token. Yeah. She's let's, 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 call it, let's call it what it is. Yeah, she's let's call it what it is today. Go ahead. Like the Viola Davis, the Cicely Tyson, the Tika Sumter, the, the chosen dark-skinned actresses that they picked. Like Ryan is like literally about to be in that lineup, unfortunately. Like she's not about to be in it. She's leading the line. Like she, like, like she leading the line all the way to the unemployment line. Because what, 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 what she, what, what she doing on that show? Like she, what, she don't do nothing on the show except give lines every now and then. And it's like you built, you built up this character. You said oh, she's going to an HBCU, guys. Which one you think she went to? Her never to bring it up except for casually last episode, and we see nothing with protest. We see nothing with, oh, Spellman and, and AUC. She could have had points. And here's my thing with Ryan Destiny. Here's my thing with her. I, I like Rochelle. I like the actress that plays Rochelle, and I did like the part where she told off Zoe. You know I love that part because I hate Zoe. But, but, like, the big part is, like, why is it Ryan Destiny Aaron's girlfriend? Why? Why? Like, literally what they could have done, because cause I don't want to be like, oh, well, Randall's just saying, oh, he don't like the show. Why, do, why did he say what, what he would do? What I would have done, if you gave me a check and King Barris hired me, he's not going to after this, after this. But, like, I would have made it where Ryan Destiny is now Aaron's girlfriend. Zoe comes back, and basically Ryan Destiny is the girlfriend, and she's woke. She's from HBCU. She's everything Zoe isn't, and Zoe hates her. The same way that you got Dre on Blackish that hates um, uh, Rainbow's brother, uh -huh. that same way. She hates on her. She's jealous of her. But Ryan don't play that. So Ryan and, and, and Zoe got a bit of an issue. And then Sky and Jazz love her because she real. And they hang around her. And then now you, you could be like, Zoe versus Ryan. Who's going to win Aaron's affection? Just like you know you want to do. And now it will make sense. But no, you decide to cast her as Luca's as Luca's weed partner. She he he ro he roll she rolls it up and he likes it at this point. Like at, at this point, this is what it is. Like she is pointless. She is pointless. She is there just for the look and just because she is Ryan Destiny. She is a token. Let's call it out tonight. I, I don't I don't got time to play. Let's literally call it out. Yeah. Like she is a token character and sky and jazz i they're my favorite characters consistently and i hate how they dumb them down even with aaron i feel as if i understand why they dumb down aaron when angela rye popped up and i was i love to see angela rye because let's just say this too we, we said this janae we've not seen angela rye on cnn recently and haven't haven't seen my girl since freshman year i was 2018 where my girl go i haven't seen her and I, I just want to say, I've not seen Angela Rye since I saw Abby Phillip, but I'm not going to say anything about that. Hello, we're going to talk about it later. I love Abby Phillip, but, let, but let's, let's be honest. We, we ain't seen Angela Rye since Abby Phillip. That don't got nothing to do with this because we've got to see her on Gronish. Yeah. And, you know, she, but she, she basically was like a throwaway character, too. She, she, basically, she, she was Ryan Destiny. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, she was Ryan Destiny. But, uh, but basically, you know, Aaron messing up in the interview, I understand he had that good point. And then, like, you know, he, he segued off of it. Got it. Understood. I feel like Aaron has shown me more nuance, but okay. I get it. They, they show Aaron has dumb sides, too. Okay. 
And I, I understand the aspect of like people being fake with him. He did a good job. And Scott was the only one not fake with him. And I love how um, Doug brought up Marcus Garvey. Like Marcus Garvey is often forgotten in the realms of black history. He had the United Negro Improvement Association. He was trying to get black folks to own their own stuff, like how we're doing. Like own your own newspaper. He had his own newspaper. He had his own hotels. He was doing so much great stuff. And at the end of Dr. King's life, he started really sounding like Marcus Garvey. So the fact that King Barris did interweave that in and had Diggy say it, had Doug say it, so so the girls are here. You know what I'm saying? Because every time Diggy say something, y'all swoon. So now, like, who's Marcus Garvey? Who's that? So thank you, King Barris, for that. I appreciate that. Marcus Garvey is one of my favorite black leaders in history. Thank you. But outside of that, like, I liked, like, every scene without Zoe is amazing. Top it is phenomenal. Top it is great. But here's the thing. So my favorite scene outside of when Zoe got told off, my favorite scene has to be when Javier and Aaron spoke outside. And we're going to, I, I want to touch on a point that Janae made about just the optic of it. But with the story of it, you know that you can, you can tell Javier don't really like Buddy because he know that, that Anna and Aaron had something going on. Then on top of that, you know, just how, you know, Aaron did him, was very sarcastic with him. And Javier is a complex character. So that conversation that Javier and Aaron had was really cool. And that is how you operate in college. Like you operate like that in college where you talk to people, you get their viewpoints, you get their perspectives, and you learn more about what they have going on. So I really liked and enjoyed that aspect of the conversation. I don't like how they tried to interweave in a relationship issue, but I thought that was great. But my only thing is this in my assessment of that scene. That should not have been Javier telling Aaron that. That should have been Zoe. And that's what I thought they were going to do. Why is Javier, and I understand how, why they did with Javier, but why is Javier putting Aaron up on game like that when Zoe could have? And here's how I would have rewritten that scene, okay? So basically, um, I would have had it where cause everybody's giving Aaron props and Zoe, like Aaron goes like, hey, Zoe, you here? How, how you doing? I'm good. And she sort of drives to him and was like, listen, I'm sorry. Everything went down, but can we still be friends? Yeah, we can still be friends. So what do you think? I thought it was good. Now, be honest with me. What do you think? And then she's like, honestly, you were sort of all over the place. Like, for real, like, yeah, I thought you could have been a little bit more, more pointed. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, that, that could have been Zoe saying that. Javier shouldn't have said that. And we're going to talk about what Zoe did because I'm basically going to rewrite the episode. This, this at party. I'm basically going to put, I, I, you see, you see, look, look, I, I got my, I got my keyboard. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this episode as we go through. All right. But Janae had something very interesting to say about the setup of the scene. So tell us about that, Janae. Okay. So everybody knows I'm a television enthusiast. I eventually want to become a television director. It's like my girl Jillian. And one thing I noticed was that in that scene, it was filmed dark. Like it, the tones were very dark. And every other scene in Gronish is pretty light, except maybe the um, dark scene when they're at night. But even then, because of their equipment, they like the characters really well. So I noticed that it was dark. And I think they gave it a dark tone just based off the seriousness of the conversation. Also, it kind of gave me like um, a two different, um, because like they're two different people. So you have not light because he's Cuban or whatever, but like lights based off he's right and dark because like he has like a left kind of viewpoint and they come together and it's kind of like gray and cloudy so that's why I kind of think they went with that dark tone for that particular scene and because of the candidness of their conversation so um I just noticed that it was just dark when they went out to talk and I also um when Anna came out she looked kind of shook so I don't know if that was like a foreshadow to Anna's kind of embarrassment that's why it was dark a little bit but I did notice that and most of the scenes throughout the entire show were lit well and it was you know like a regular comp a composition but that particular scene was dark and I thought it was very interesting I feel like with <laughs> with that with, with Anna they just try to figure out how can we put in relationships in this like they were like how can we do this you know we should have Anna just come out there like like like, like they just they having a secret meeting on how, how to get at her like like bro we know that Javier celibate we know that Aaron just got arrested like why are we talking so much about relationships? Yeah. And they they made it so like how did like I was trying to figure out how did they find out a way to make it about Aaron and Zoe when he just got arrested? We didn't see the police officers get in trouble. 
We don't know what happens to police officers. They probably at home minding their business with their wife, <laughs> just chilling. <laughs> they wife and husband just chilling. Like, I just what happened to the police officers? What happened to that to that part? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, how is like why they have a powwow get together about relationships? Like, like why did they have that, man? And here's the thing. Why is Zoe the worst part of her show? I'm going to keep saying that. Zoe is the worst part of her own show. And I said this, and I ruined the moment because I told Janae this already. She already laughed. I'm probably not going to laugh now. But I feel like like Zoe, Zoe on this show is like, you have, because Janae's birthday is next week. So happy birthday to Janae. Okay. Early happy birthday. It's like you go, Janae goes to her birthday party and someone else blow out the candles. That's essentially what this is on her own show. And it's like, but the thing about it is that Let's say Janae is Zoe. Janae not mad. Janae is worried about, about, about her ex. That, that's literally what Zoe is at this point. Oh, what's what's Aaron doing? Aaron didn't even go with you. Yeah. You you you, you, you done slept with, 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 with all these good cast with Luca. You didn't go there with Aaron. All of a sudden, what, what he doing? Or how's this rat tail doing? Can I can I break the rat tail? Like, <laughs> like, I, I just, <laughs> like at, at this point, like I, I just I just don't know. Like but, it, it is, it's insane. But it just repeats itself. Zoe will not be on the show, and it'll just be Sky and Jazz, just like how in a different world when Denise left, and Jasmine and Freddie and Kim and Dwayne and Ron took over. And then the show was amazing. So if history repeats itself. And he and Kenya often says that he does love Bill Cosby. Granted, he didn't support what he did, but he, he says he loves Bill Cosby. So maybe, just maybe. Maybe he will take a page out of the Cosby handbook in regards to content creation and just please go on. Maybe, well, I don't wish this for y'all because y'all is my celebrity best friend, but maybe Zoe gets pregnant and has to leave the show for representation purposes. I was going to go there. I don't think, I don't think we want to happen to, well, are to Denise. My best friend. Y'all is my celebrity best friend. Her birthday. <laughs> don't, don't, we don't need that. We don't need that. I still need Yara. But, you know, spice it up. We <laughs> We don't want that at, at, at this point. We, we don't. We don't want that to happen to her because we want to have, have a very illustrious, amazing career. I just hate Zoe. Okay, I just hate, I just hate Zoe. Yeah. And Yara is playing her amazingly because I think I'm supposed to hate Zoe. Just say, as a man, I'm supposed to hate Zoe. But here, here, here's the thing though. Speaking of Zoe, and you know, here's one thing. Like I spoke about it when I spoke about Jonathan Capehart doing the AKA thing on Sunday, and I went in on him is that representation matters. And that's one thing with HBCU Post that we do. I make sure that for topics like this, if it's a Greek topic, I go to a Greek. If it's a topic about women, I talk to women. I talk to black women of all different shapes, sizes, and shades. What I want to figure out is this, and can someone help me out? I need for someone in the audience to help me out to text me. Text me at 478-221-7127. So let's say that y'all came back from the George Floyd march. And, you know, your friend sees her ex there, and you see him there, and you see them all are marching together, and they pepper spray you. They, 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 lock, they locking your ex up. They locking people up. Are you going to go back to, to, your, to your home or go wherever you're going to be like, well should, well, should I tell my boyfriend the X, Y, Z, or should I do X, Y, Z? Would you go back and talk about relationships after a protest? Would you? No, because first of all, we would be still mad. We probably got arrested and we would be like in the jail cell calling our parents to bail us out about whatever the injustice happened. We wouldn't have gone home to talk about relationships. And I think it brings to your point like earlier when you mentioned that this show was assaulted to black women because while don't get me wrong, we talk about our men and our relationships and stuff together because we're women. All women do that. But we also have substance to us. And it's like they pick and choose when they want to give substance. Like, for example, um, there was one episode when Aaron was trying to find a job. And they were sitting there getting on Zoe for not helping them out. And Jazz said, if we were all supposed to get a job, it would go to Nomi. Then it would go to um, Anna. It would go to Vivek. And then maybe it will go to Aaron, Doug, and then me, Zoe, and and Scott, we would all be last, you know? And so they bring up these, like, conversations where it's like, okay, they're enlightened. And then... They do dumb stuff. And it's almost assaulting because, you know, representation is important. And we don't see too many smart black characters with a bunch of depth to them. And this was the opportunity for, and Kit kind of just 
sprinkles a little depth and then goes back to stupid. Now, granted, we all have slow moments, but it's almost insulting because it's like, <laughs> and it's like, it's insulting because like, I, want, I haven't probably seen a smart, talented, black lead since maybe, with, well, maybe um, Kim? I, I can, you can even say, you know, you know, you're Olivia Pope's and everything, but they're still flawed by stuff with men. But like outside of like them being flawed with stuff with men, like, you know, your Viola Davis is on how to get away with murder and uh, Kerry Washington on- Mary Jane Paul. Mary, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was going to mention her, but I hate, I, 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 I hate her at the same time. So I didn't want to get into that. And even Issa Rae, like Issa Rae shows her depth kind of sometimes her awkwardness. So I feel like it sucks that we still can't get just a solid character Without the extras, like, we all have flaws, but, like, just can we get something more solid for um, adequate Black female representation? It's something that we're proud of as well. I think I want to hop on that. Something that we are proud of, because, like, I'm 20 and I'm young and I'm cool, but I have a lot of depth to me. I have deep conversations with my friends almost every single day, and it's not because we're sad and we're boring. It's just the company that I kick myself with, and that's a good representation because I feel like this generation is very in-depth and very in tune with political issues, feelings, mental health, so why can't that be exposed on TV as well? And the thing is that they've dumbed down Zoe from when she was even on Blackish. She was she yeah, she had her her her, her quote unquote blonde moments, but at the same time she showed more nuance. You're not leaving Aaron doing an interview with Angela Rod talking about, well, you know, how you think about that, like how should I feel? Like why like, I just like he's minimizing like they're minimizing black well not just Katie Bears. I feel like they're minimizing black women because black women are more nuanced than this. Yeah, we have black women are more complex than this. Yeah, yeah. And and it's like he he's insulting you all. He's saying that y'all all y'all want to talk about is relationships. All y'all care about is, is that boy that walked by you and wink. That's what that's what Kenya Barris told me from his writing. That's what he told me. He didn't say black women are complex and young black women, they're career focused and driven and socially aware and pretty and all these different things. He said all they care about is relationships. They're going to sit around the dorm. They're going to sit around their little townhouse. All they're going to do is talk about Aaron, talk about Doug. Well, I, I saw Doug at the protest and oh, I didn't, I, I didn't, you know, I, I saw Doug and I, I went to say something to him, but I couldn't. But, at, but literally, I saw him at the thing, but that's, that's all. That's all. And it, it, it's just like, because they can write good content. The Javier Aaron part was great. That part was amazing. The part with uh, Rochelle and Zoe was great at the end. And this part that Aaron said after, in, in, in the third act when he shows up at Zoe's door, you don't have to be a weirdo around me. Zoe is a weirdo. But Zoe, Zoe is, I feel like Zoe is that one person you tolerate just because she cute. I feel like that's what Zoe is in, 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 in real life. <laughs> she said she ain't president. She the miss. She the queen. Y'all only talking her because she cute, but y'all really like her for real. She the campus queen. Oh, my God. You, <laughs> yeah, well, you'll take it to another level. I I, 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 I say all that. <laughs> I ain't say all that now. But Zoe is literally the friend that, like, a lot of these guys is like, okay, she be insulting me. She really be getting on my nerves. But I like her because she cute. Yeah, she fine, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's literally like how guys operate. It's like, not me. Oh, my God. Zoe would have been cut off. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing to cut him off. Snip, snip. That would have been, that literally would have been me. That would have been me at this point because Zoe is so childish. She she is toxic. She's played Aaron and then wants to run back like the sick puppy. Like, oh, he hurt me. Hey, no. And Aaron keeps coming back because he, 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 he likes her. Oh, I, I need your help. I was like, this is the moment. The, the ball is in your court, sir. Kenya Barris and the writers, you got this. Come on now, you got it. Like, basically, make me happy. Because I was like, listen, Zoe's going to come back, and she's going to help out Aaron. So all of a sudden, he's like, you know what? I need your help. You remember that time you did that thing about the Black Panthers? And I said, you're minimizing it to fashion, but you made an intelligent point about the Black Panthers having a uniform. Yeah, I remember that. And then she broke it down. He was like, listen, <laughs> you know what? I need a uniform for our protest. And I'm like, if this ain't the most high school musical mess I've ever seen in my life, we're all in this together. Like, this is literally the most high school musical mess I've ever seen 
in my life. You know what? Police brutality. And, oh, I got arrested. And we don't know what happened. Did, we don't know if his mom found out. We don't, he, he was on TV on this public access show with Angela Rye. This, <laughs> this YouTube channel <laughs> with Angela Rye. Let's be honest. Angela it, it was a YouTube channel at this point. Uh, and, like, all of a sudden, let, you know what? Let's, let's create an outfit. They had the montage of them putting together the outfit. I'm like, bro. Am I watching Grownish or or High School Musical? Am I am I watching Grownish or or or, or Jesse at this point? <laughs> like, what am I watching? <laughs> like, at this point, Jesse. what am I? <laughs> like, what am I watching? So the solution to all the problem is to dress up like you an extra in Orange Is the New Black. Like so, the solution to the problem is for you to dress up like, 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 like you, like you want to talk to cellmates in Power Book Two Ghost. That, 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 that's that's the answer to everything that's going on wrong with black people. Not voting, not not structured protests, not trying to meet with the president, not trying to meet with the chancellor, not like like not not doing a sit in. Hey, let's let's all dress up the same. You know, oh, what you wearing? <laughs> What you wear? What you wear? Um, with your jumpsuit? What, what you wear? You wear some nice with your jumpsuit? Oh, I'm wearing some chucks, man. Yeah, I'm wearing chucks. Oh, I want to get really into the jail field. Like, <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> now, if, if it was that simple, we could have told Dr. Martin King Jr. that we could have helped the Freedom Riders. We could have helped when people from Fisk University were going to participate in national sit-ins. Like, if that's the case, then we we. We have solved racism, guys. Like we have, we have solved racism. We have solved the disenfranchisement from black and brown people. We have survived the marginal. We have survived it all based on some jumpsuits, based off that said student on the back, so that can emphasize that these are not inmates, we're students. Whatever you know. Literally on Black History Month. After February one, we had the Bennett Bells and those North Carolina A and T students, the Greensboro Four. Yeah. And the Bennett Bells, they had that sit in in, in Greensboro, and you had Martin Luther King getting bitten by dogs and and and, and fire hoses, and people yeah. always talk about the I Have a Dream speech. But but the, if you look at the reason why, if you listen to what Dr. King said, is essentially he was using the media so masterfully to show the world how black folks were being treated. Mm -hmm. That's what he did that for. It wasn't for clout. It wasn't because, oh, hey, I want to be on TV. Oh, this dog bite actually actually feels good. No. They did, he did that to showcase to the world and to America that this is how you're treating black people. And then Malcolm X brings it to the point of, listen, first of all, we're not going to keep playing with y'all. Because, oh, you, you got guns, we got guns. Then on top of that, Malcolm X, before he died, was like, you know what? This is a human rights violation. We're taking this to the United Nations. Yep, mm -hmm, yeah. That, that is protest. That's strategy. You got Dr. King mobilizing them, and, and, and essentially they, they're getting beaten down, and, 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 and fire hoses are being turned on them. And Malcolm X went from, hey, oh, no, we, 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 we strapped up too. What's up? Pull up. Mm -hmm. To like, you know what? Let's take this to the United Nations because you have, at that time, 20 million black people that are being disenfranchised and pushed out and Jim Crow and being assaulted and being lynched and churches being bombed. Let's go to the United Nations and talk to them. And all of a sudden, he gets killed. All of a sudden, you got Martin Luther King that's talking about economic justice. He did. Yeah. So, so what you're telling me is that on Black History Month, as an HBCU graduate, that you're spitting in the face of HBC graduate, AU, fellow AUC alum, Dr. King, and Malcolm X, and Marcus Garvey, who, who, you, who you spoke about. Because all we need to do is dress up at, at the same time and sit on the steps of a building. That's, that's all we need to do? And then we just have Aaron be like, okay, so listen, I don't like petitions because it's, it's symbolic and all these different things. All of a sudden, he, he, he's showing up with, with the Joy Badass song in, in, in the background and all this different stuff playing. That's, that's all? So that's all that was needed this whole entire time. We didn't see Aaron go through. We see we didn't see Aaron go through anything after being arrested, any mental trauma, none of these things. They could have brought up like what, what, and I would give them this. This was shot probably before George Floyd. I would give them that. But at the same time, Trayvon Martin. At the same time, Walter Scott. At at, 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 at the same time, Sandra, you have all these different. Say again. Sandra Bland. Even that was. I think that was before. So yeah. 
literally they and I, I know it's free form I, like, like i know you want a multicultural audience you can sell more more products than advertising i know the game you want a multicultural audience so you try to brand brand grown as, as a multicultural show when literally everybody on there is black and stuff javier and anna like at this point like no, like, 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 no, Nomi's invisible at this point. Like, no, like, like, like Nomi got a baby. Like, 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 Nomi, Nomi has the baby you want Zoe to have. Like, Nomi is gone. I don't care if they got pregnant for sure. I'm like, man, we could have took a page out of Sir Cosby's book. Oh, oh, sir. You said the wrong kids that got pregnant. Man, she could have got pregnant by cash and went and became the NBA baby mama. Like, she could have, she could have lived her life as a scammer. That's what Zoe gonna be her next life. She could have lived. She could live her best life as a scammer at this point. She, she, Zoe, Zoe would be an amazing scammer at this point. Like Zoe would be great on the court side at this point. I'm like she could have went with Cass and lived her best life, and then gave the show over, over to Chloe and Hallie and let them become the superstars they're destined to be. Because all they need is that Dazzle Raven type of show. Yeah. Like that's all they need. All they needed was that Dazzle Raven show to really catapult them to the greatness that they're destined to have. But in general, like I just, it, it was so insulting. This this scene where they stood out, it was beautifully shot. But this scene where they're out there with, with the jumpsuits and all the different things, it was so insulting to Black Lives Matter. It was so insulting to all those individuals. Because remember, we did that January 6th show that were pepper sprayed when Donald Trump won that photo out with that with that Bible. Mm -hmm. All the folks that, that that were shot in the eye by by, by those by those bullets, those pepper bullets. All the folks that protested and were arrested, it was it, it was disrespectful because that's not how the movement works. That's not. Yeah. And it 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 it, it, it like you're disrespecting black women, you're disrespecting the, the 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 culture of what protest is on Black History Month. You're you're minimizing this whole entire generation to just thinking about relationships. This is insane. Yeah. And something has to be said about. I'm I, I am I am tired of these media companies. Thinking that oh we're just we're just so simple, I'm tired of it. I literally am because you have talented people that are at these HBCUs like Janae. You have talented people that that are at all, all, all these different places that you can tap in with and put them at the table as interns, as as consultants. You you can go to 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 what UCLA and get some film students and bring them in and then ask them. So what would you say in this situation? What would you do? You could do interviews, and they cannot lie and say that, that they do that. You, 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 they, they cannot lie and say, oh, yeah, we do that. No, you don't. You don't do that. You don't. And, and it, it, it is literally so frustrating that then the next scene is, and then on top of that, so let's talk about this, too, because we're almost at time. Let's talk about this, too. So Janae and I had a very interesting discussion about two things. Zoe's... Um, his, like her advice with the clothes stuff to Aaron. So I took it back to the game. You guys remember the game on BET? I know y'all hated it. I know y'all hated the game on BET. It's fine. I loved it. I, I, I enjoyed the game on BET. I enjoyed it. And I love Lauren London, and I love um, my, my guy, uh, Jay Ellis. That, that was his first big role. I love Jay Ellis. Was, that was his first big role, the game. Yep. So the big thing was, if you remember, it was a protest episode where you had um, – Basically, the owner of the Sabers called um, his, his 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 team slaves, and the players were outraged. Like they were upset, and it was the different dynamics of Blue. Was like, I'm not playing the game, and he decided not to play the game. And he uh, was at that meeting, and then basically was like, Hey, listen, like we got to hold the line. And the team went up with him because he was the leader. So. Blue is just going through it. He's at the bar, hard drinking, all of that. Lauren London just got, got, got caught busted sleeping with Malik. So she goes up to him, and Blue don't want to hear from her. But, but you know, got Lauren London's care to Kiara. Is like, Kiara's like, listen, they're not following you because you're Blue Almighty. They're following you because you're right. Hold the damn line. And that was enough to motivate Blue to be like, you know what? That's right. That was his ex saying that. Mm -hmm. Why is Zoe? You know what? You, you know you know it'd be cute if you, if you put bracelets with with the jumpsuit. Like what? Yeah. So that's the advice you are gonna give, and then gonna Facetime him while he while he with his girlfriend. They Netflix and chilling. Yeah. You don't know what would have happened two minutes later. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden he gonna answer, 
And then the girlfriend was like, what the world? And then kisses him. That was the, that was a dope move. But let's be honest. It was like, well, Randall, because she was like, well, Randall, you know, in real life, you know, a, a lot of folk, a lot of women would not have reacted to Zoe like that in public. They would have just respectfully stepped to it. I'm like, I understand that. I, like, I know some girls that would have popped Zoe when, when they saw her. But see, you got to realize where I'm from. I'm from Macon. So, you know, I, like, I'm, I'm used to They would have They would have stole off on Zoe. But see, the big thing is like, I understand that. But I was like, Janae, so if that would happen in real life, she would have made that move. It would have been a petty move, but it would have been the right move for, for Rochelle to do that. But she would have been like, hey, you know, you know, come to the bedroom. So Aaron comes in there and is like, so why are you on, why are we on the phone with that? Why are we on the phone with Zoe? But, but, man, but yeah, it ain't nothing, man. She's just she's helping me with this thing. No, I asked you, why were you on the phone with Zoe at 11 o'clock night? Why'd you answer? Because we were talking about the protest, baby. You know, you, you always tripping. No, I'm not tripping. I, I'm I'm your girlfriend. Like, what's up? Like, I'm your girlfriend. We chilling. We we talking. She don't need to call. Like, literally, she would have checked Eric. Eric have been like, "Why are you tripping? You know I'm with you. You you already know that." That would have been the conversation, and you could have made it because I'm I'm up on game. I write these scenes. You could have made it where the guy with Aaron is flipping the game on her, making it seem like she wrong, using reverse psychology. You could have did that, but you could have had it where it's like, no, she should not be calling you. As a matter of fact, I need you to say something to her. I will. And it would have been like, oh, wait a minute. And that could have been the pressure, like, Zoe, like, we, we, we were doing this work thing, but that's all it is. You were sort of out of line calling me at, at that time. And that could have been the thing, and you could have caused the riff. You, you could have did that, and it would have been more selling. It would have been more real. And you would have caused a lot of conversation with Janae and all 30 of her, all 36, 37, 38, 39, 40 of her line sisters at this point. All, 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 all of whatever. You, they would have been talking about it. In, in, like I saw them on group FaceTime, on Zoom. They would have <laughs> talked about it in the cab, in, in, in the virtual cab. They, 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 they could have done that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but they chose the easy way out. They chose Anna, like Javier and Aaron having another dope moment. Oh, I had sex with him. Like, what? What, what, what did that? Uh, does she have to, like, like, does she have like to rest or something? Like, what's going on? I was like, oh, I'm, oh, like, what the world? I'm like, bro, like, why are we doing this? And even the scene where Rochelle checks Zoe, which I love that scene, they still made it about Zoe. Yeah. They still made it about, well, I look around and look, I see Anna happy with her, with her boyfriend. And I see Aaron happy with her girlfriend. And I'm alone, but she's not going to grow at all. <laughs> I'm 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 so I'm so I get lonely too, like I I I I I, I hated this episode with a passion, y'all. This was the worst episode of Grownish. I don't know how they rebound from this. I don't know how I do this again. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, I don't I don't I don't I don't know. Like I, I I got off work. I'm ready to go. I took a nap. I, I ate dinner. I, I, I was, I'm ready to go. Oh, it's happening. I didn't watch, I didn't watch basketball. I'm behind on the games to, 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 to watch a soap opera. Like, I could, I could just turn on my YouTube TV at work to watch Young and the Wrestlers. I don't need it at 10 o'clock, at 8 o'clock at night. I, I don't need it. This was the worst episode that they've ever done. Kenya Bear should be ashamed of himself. Everybody on that writing staff should be ashamed of themselves. All, all, all of them should quarantine for 14 days because they made me sick. <laughs> Literally, all of them. All of them. <laughs> all of them made me sick. And, and, and they spreading it around America. And, and, and they spreading it. So first they were spreading it to, to what? To 434,000 people. Now they're spreading it to 342. Like, like I, I literally, their rating numbers are dropping before their COVID numbers drop. I'm like, at this point, like, like this is this is insane. This is literally insane. Zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. I never want to see this episode again. Do not play this episode when I'm around. I don't even want. <laughs> I don't want to remember I did this tomorrow. I don't. I don't. It, it is a zero out of ten. They they insulted the ancestors. Like Dr. King, Dr. King is gonna have a talk with King Embarrass tonight in his dreams. I'm telling you, Doc, like, like Dr. King is gonna walk into his dreams and march to his dreams and have a talk with King Embarrass. And Malcolm X is gonna be gonna be the bad cop. Like, what's up? He go he gonna have that same shotgun <laughs> he had in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, Janae. Go go ahead and and give and give them the passing grade. Go 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 ahead. Good guys, you're out of ten for me. 
Well, Dr. Tyler said, I'm going to give them a 7 out of 10, okay? And granted, now I agree with most of the points about them insulting black women intelligence, black women intelligence. I also agree that definitely downplayed the movement. So that those were definitely like hard points off for me. But uh, while I liked it, I felt like Jillian's moment, act two is my favorite, favorite part of the episode. I felt like it was a great conversation starter. <coughs> Excuse me. I love the scene with um, Aaron and Javier. I love the way that, was, that part was just filmed so beautifully to me. And um, those were really the parts that stole the show. And I love the opening. I think the opening was very strong. So, like, literally up until the end, it was honestly, and the Zoe parts, it was honestly good. So that's why I still give it a 7 out of 10 as well. And can I mention the awards? Even though they're kind of like, eh. You're <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. okay, cool. So if you guys watch my personal page, you know that I'm talking about the, the Golden Globes that will be airing on February 28th. And I'm super excited for that. 